Welcome to Old Grown Veg. I'm standing in the greenhouse at the moment. It has rained non-stop for two days. And we've never seen the sunshine. How is anybody supposed to grow anything in this weather? Guess what you're looking at? What's on screen now? That's the sky. Yeah, yeah, wall to wall greyness. And it's been like that for the last two days and we've seen very little sunshine over the last few weeks. Very little. Um, so yeah, we're stuck in the greenhouse today. Uh, let me just show you this. Let me pan down. Everything little old water is full, including my rain barrel that catches water from the greenhouse. With more water than you can shake a stick at. And looking at these water buckets, because they are still water buckets, they hold water, I will need to get round all my ex cut flower water buckets that are now plant pots and have potatoes, carrots, beetroot onions, leeks, celery, all the vegetables I grow there'll be some in some of these ex-cut flower water buckets around the garden and there's every danger that those buckets will flood. Now they have got drainage holes in them and they shouldn't flood but believe me the amount of water we're getting now the amount of rain that we are getting now those buckets are in serious danger of flooding because the water just can't get through them quickly enough. So when I get the chance, and when this rain stops, and I would advise you to do the same if you're sitting under something like this, is to get round your buckets and just make sure that none of them are flooded. Uh, and what I tend to do is if they are flooded, if I can lean them on the side, I'll do that uh, to get remove some of the surplus water, and then I'll ease them up off the ground uh, and put something underneath them uh, that will keep them slightly elevated uh, to give the water a chance to get out through those drainage holes. Wow, what a day. And say, let me ask you this one. Um, check this tomato out. You may have seen me take that one off uh, one of my tomato plants in a previous video. Uh, that was the first red tomato of the year in the greenhouse. In fact, it was the only red tomato at the time. And it had blossom end rot. Can you believe it? All the tomatoes in the greenhouse from top to bottom are green. Every plant has lots of tomatoes on there. The only red one had blossom end rot. How about that? How about that? Now then, and this is the question. From watching videos on YouTube and reading books, it would become um, apparent that blossom end rot is caused by a calcium deficiency in the tomato plant because uh, there's been inconsistent water in the plants dried out, the roots haven't been able to access any calcium uh, that's in the soil and there's been a calcium deficiency in the tomato plant. So, so this is the question, right? I'm watering these tomato plants every day. Every plant gets the same amount of water. Okay? So I'm fairly confident that I don't have a watering issue. I'm fairly confident that these 10 inch water buckets have not dried out. So that particular plant and that particular tomato. How come the rest of the tomatoes on that plant aren't showing signs of blossom end rot? How come 
just one tomato has blossom end rot. If that plant had suffered a calcium deficiency, how come it has only affected one tomato? How does that work? Or can I expect a lot more to develop blossom end rot? I don't know how that works. I honestly don't. Uh, and I hope I don't get any more of it. Hey, this is like gardener's uh, question time, isn't it? Gardener's question time. Only it's the gardener asking the question. And another problem I'm having here in this greenhouse. This is a polycarbonate greenhouse. And its insulation properties are excellent. So it's always warmer in here than it is outdoors. Even on a cold day, it's slightly warmer in the greenhouse than it is outside. And today, it's slightly warmer in the greenhouse than it is outside, even with this terrible weather we're having. But when I come in here, there are lots of condensation on the inside of the panels on the polycarbonate. And I guess that's because of the temperature difference. Warmer inside, colder outside. You've had it in your house, you've had it in your conservatory. Isn't that how condensation works? And generally the way to get rid of condensation is to ventilate. Am I right? Is that how we deal with condensation? Now my worry is, in this greenhouse, um, because I've got condensation on the inside of the panels, uh, and because it's slightly warmer in here, we're starting to get conditions that encourage blight. It's warm and it's wet. It's warm and it's damp. Mind you, it's not that warm, but it is warm. That's why I've got condensation. So I don't want these blight conditions in the greenhouse. And the only way I'm going to overcome this condensation is to keep the door open. Now on windy days, that's, that's a non-starter because... <laughs> There's every chance I'll lose me greenhouse. But on a day like this where it's reasonably calm, I can leave this door open all day. But the condensation, hopefully, will disappear. But of course, so will any warm that the greenhouse has been holding. So which is which is the lesser of two evils? Leave the door closed, have the greenhouse a little bit warmer, but lots of condensation, or leave the door open, lose that heat, but also lose that condensation. What do you do? Which is best? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh, I wish this rain would stop. I wish this rain would stop. I want to get around this garden. I mean, I've got lots of buckets that I've converted into uh, pots for growing things in. They're all over the place.
but there's no way I'm going to them until this rain stops. There's no way if they're flooded, they're flooded. Um, but as soon as the rain stops, I'm out of this greenhouse and I'll try and make sure that any pot that is flooded uh, get the water out of it one way or another. In fact, I'm not going to wait for this rain stopping. I'm, uh, I'm going indoors for a cup of tea. Oh, and one last thing before I go for this cup of tea. I think I've covered this subject on YouTube before. There are people out there that tell you you need it's at least six hours of sunshine to grow vegetables. <laughs> six hours of sunshine a day to grow vegetables. What a load of baloney! If we had six hours of sunshine every day, I would think I was living in the Mediterranean somewhere. This is the north of England. We never get six hours of sunshine. You don't. You've got trees surrounding your house. You've got other buildings near your house. You've got, you live on the side of a hill. The sun comes up one side, goes down the other. You never get six hours of sunshine in a day. And hey, we haven't seen the sun for, oh, it's that long ago I can't remember. Well, I'll tell you what, if I've heard of cabin fever, I think I'm getting greenhouse fever. Right, I'm going in now, I'm going to have that cup of tea. Hey, have a nice day, enjoy your day, stay safe, stay in the garden. I know it's not much fun if the weather's like this, uh, but remember, Covid's on the other side of the fence, isn't it? There's no Covid in your garden, hopefully. You stay in your garden, you should be safe. Safe enough to see another garden in summer out, and hopefully a few more after that, and grow some vegetables. Hey, come on, homegrown veg. Keep your chin up. Now I'm off for that cup of tea. This is Homegrown Veg, signing out.